for this class for this class this is a board we are going to be leaving this is the board we are going to be using this is our development board this is the board we are going to be using good thing that you have one already so this is the board you are going to be using uh, it is on this board that every programming assignment every system we intend to design will be built up if you then want to have the system installed somewhere then you can then take the parts that were made use of this board and then you can then draw out its own specific circuit diagram to create this or form this this one you can then have in a box hand somewhere that will be in the way question is this if if you have 10 systems to design before you know whether the systems are going to work or not that is very much after you've done your circuit diagram you've done your simulation and it looks like it's working and like i said before the fact that it works in simulation does not mean it's going to work in real life but there are some conditions you are going to actually subject that system to that in the simulation you might not be able to subject them to and get such responses but in real life you're going to get those responses i mean a very good example was something we faced last two weeks and last week it was crazy. We had an input, uh, an input sensor, a voltage sensor, whose uh, a voltage level was as high as the voltage supply of our controller. And even while our board was not on, that sensor magnitude or voltage output magnitude was powering our board. It took us two weeks. Are you? two weeks to solve that problem now if we are designing on something like this and to solve the problem what did we do we had to create another board to be sure that the problem was not on the board now imagine the cost to us we've created the board materials already sold out there and then there was a fault and on the simulation it said there's no fault but of course there was there's a fault and then you have to create another board just to confirm that the problem was not you or the problem is not the board only to find out that it was your thinking that was not right you used to get it, that's crazy I imagine the cost was now if you needed to design 10 different systems you need to make 10 different boards like this are you following me? but with this development board you can have all those 10 boards uh, systems created using this board and then you can, I mean, monitor interaction, know whether it will work, whether it will not work, test uh, before you then finally go about making this. Do you get the point? Now, this board will serve for uh, a person who just getting involved in microcontroller technology as a, as a beginner or even as an intermediate or even to the advanced level. The reason is this, is that, I mean, the reason for that is that this board comes fully packed with some modules to work with. Among those modules, like I've said before, is that this board, uh, uh, again, something I forgot to say, that for every system that you're going to be creating, each of those 10 systems you're going to be creating would have its own or their own specific power requirements and will determine what your power circuit will look like. Which means if you need 10 amps, you're going to have to design a 10 amp system. For those that need 5 amps, you need to create a 5 amp system. For those that requires maybe two different voltage levels, 3.2, 3.3, and the rest of you are going to create it on those individual boards. Now, and of course, that's dependent on the number of sensors you're going to be attaching to each of those systems. That has been created or made provided for in this board. How do I mean? On this board, you can attach a Wi Fi module. This is the ESP 12016. With this, you can create any system that has to do with sending information to the internet, IoT, or uh, you can do that. Or even Wi Fi to Wi Fi communication, you can do that. Are you getting me? That's a Wi Fi. And the power requirement for the Wi Fi module has already been satisfied on this board. All you need to do is get the Wi Fi module. This is one is it and then attach it to this board and then to carry out the wi-fi related projects it has a bluetooth module this could be the aco5 or the aco6 and already has a spot created for it here 
is file requirement two, and uh, uh, transmit receive uh, 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 logic condition has also been satisfied on this board. Does it make sense? You can also attach it to the C module. This is the C800. With the C800, you can do anything that has to do with what? GPRS or text message or call related projects. This board has a port for it already. All you need to do is buy and attach and then you are good to go. Uh, I went further to say last week or the last time we mentioned it is that this board can actually serve any or accommodate any sensor, module or transceiver that uses the universal synchronous and synchronous receive transmit uh, 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 option on board. It will take it. Because of course, the Bluetooth is UART, the Wi-Fi is UART, the Symmetrical DL is also UART. Are you, are you following me? The board also comes ready to interface with graphic F, that's a graphic FCD, Alpha numeric FCDs. This is the 20 by, by 4. It can also attach to uh, it can attach to the 16 by 2. This is the 16 by 2. 16 by 2, which means it has two lines. It can accommodate 16 characters. This has this can accommodate 20 characters and it has four lines. So you can have line one, line two, line three, and line four. You can attach to it directly. Very good. Now, if you go to the market and then you get there is another type of SCD. This is another type. This is another 16 by 2 SCD, but it already has a module. What the module has done, this is an I square C module. It has converted the parallel connection on the LCD to just two pins. So that instead of having to need maybe seven input output pins on your mouse controller to interface this type of LCD or this type of LCD, what you now need now are just what? Two pins to interface. Now, this board can also, of course, if you can carry out your art, then you should be able to actually interface to any I square C module or any SPI module. They're going to be hearing of the SPI, the I square C, um, the one wire communication, the MSSP, the P and the PSP. But we'll begin to discuss the controller in, in in depth. In our in depth. Do you get, do you, do you get my point now? So, I mean, still on this board, I'm just saying this board can actually attach to uh, an alpha numeric LC. The board also comes with a, a serial E prom on it. The serial E prom also <laughs> will communicate with the mouse controller using ISPC. The good thing about ISPC is that you can have different ISPC modules sharing the same port. The only thing is that they're going to have different addresses. As I'm speaking, every one of you in this hall is listening to me. But it is whose name I've mentioned. Are you getting my point? That either carries out an action or an instruction that I've given. So the I square C has an address. I mean, the the Sierra Eprom has an address. Uh, this has an address. Uh, your your DS thirteen oh seven. Let me begin to write some of these things so that you don't don't forget. I said that the board can interface to any I square C. Uh, 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 compatible mode. I, I mean, can see that as I square C, so you can see that as I to C, and so you can see that as I I C. I mean, just the main question depends on uh, how I and every person tend to actually uh, 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 refer to it. Are you with me? Now, the good thing about I, I square C is that each of those modules have addresses, so you can have more than one, more than two. You can have as many as possible on the same bus. Communicating with the same app controller using the same pin. If you need to communicate with me, you communicate with me using the same year, you are also used to have communicated with me. Are you are you following me right now? Is, does, does, does it make sense? So that's the advantage you have got with the I2C uh, uh, communication box or, or, or data box. Now, so I said it already has a serial EEPROM on board. What is the EEPROM? The EEPROM is a memory location where data or information are stored permanently. So that even when power is withdrawn from the board, the system does not forget those information. If you are working on your RAM and lights taken off, your RAM loses that information. Except for software that has now been done now. I mean, that can uh, help you maybe auto save and then you can recover. 
but without those softwares that does auto save, every information on your RAM, when power is, I mean, is injected from your system, loses. Every information is gone. We have to start this information again. But if, for the, if you need to refer back to this information, you need to retrieve those information. Then those information need to be stored at a permanent storage facility. That is where the EEPROM comes to be. Your bank controller has EEPROM location to a certain size. And that size can be exceeded. Does it make sense? For that reason, is why we now have an EEPROM on board. Uh, this EEPROM is by Atmail. The one here is the 256 kilobyte uh, uh, water size. So it can actually happen. I mean, contain a lot. When we begin to make it of it, you see. So, both this EU prom, uh, the I2C module for display, or, or the DS1307 module, which is the real time clock calendar, or any module whatsoever, or uh, any module whatever that can communicate using the I2C bus can be attached to this board. Does it make sense? So whether it is I2C, whether it is the SPI, this system or this board will work accommodated. Does it make sense? Uh, another thing that you can actually get, uh, enjoy on this board is that this board has a 20 megahertz crystal resolution capacitor on it. That will be the maximum the PIC can stand. The aspect can stand more than 20 megahertz, but when PIC is 20 megahertz. What's the implication? We'll find out when we get to discuss oscillations. We'll do that today. Uh, then, this is a 28 pin IC on this board. It means this board can only go with the 28 pin IC. And I told you that the 28 pin IC you could use or that you would be able to use with this board are the PIC 16F8738. The PIC 16F 876A, the PIC uh, 18F 2520, the PIC 18F 2620. This will be the series of mild controllers you can actually use on this board. Now, there are other 20 pin ICs. A very good example will be the PIC 18F 2550. That is the one that you have in your program. That IC can actually do USB. Even though it's a 20 pin IC. But the one here cannot do USB directly. This, the 2550 can. But any of these, 873, 876, 2520, 26, cannot interface USB directly. But if I need to do, say maybe communicate with a computer, of course, using my UART, Universal Synchronous and Synchronous Receive Transfer Module, I still can send data. Are you with me? Through, maybe, uh, through a MAX 232. Are you with me? I'll show you that through a MAX 232 to a computer. Now, usually what we do before is that we're going to send that information out through the serial port. You know, most both computers then are serial ports for serial communication. So what I would do is that, I mean, please look at this very well. I, all I would do is to attach this to this. This is the male, this is the female, so this can go on. So this is what I will do. With this Max 232, I can actually send to a serial port on the computer and it will work. But as technology advances, we now have modules that can convert our serial to USB. Imagine are you following it to USB? Is that I'm going to get a USB, get to use this. Attach the USB here. See it? And then this goes into my mouse controller board. We follow it. So from my mouse controller board, using the UART through this Max 232 to this port. This uh, female is going to be on my board. Please look up. This female is going to be on my board. This is male. 
So I can attach it to the female. Are you following me? And then this converts to what? USB. And then the USB can then go to the USB port of the computer. So that way, I have still achieved mouse controller to computer. And it's still in USB. Alternatively, that is for a mouse controller that does not offer direct USB communication. But offers UART through the max 232 port of a uh, uh, chip. Are you following me? But if I need to have direct USB, what I would have done would be to go and get a what? An ATF 2520. The reason for this is so that, I mean, I mean I'm, 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 I'm saying this so that when I now begin to mention several microcontrollers, other than what we have on our development board, you will not be saying, ah, you know, they bought this mass from me. Why does it want to kill us with a different mouse controller? Why should we know about it? About, about them? She already have a development board. No. Why we have a development board for quick execution of program, for easy learning in this field? It should also not restrict you to this controller alone. Because there are more than this controller. This is a 20 pin IC. There are 40 pin ICs too. This will be an example of the 40 pin mouse controller. This. This is a 16F8778. And there's another 40 pin that is a 16F887. And then we also have the 8, I mean, these are the 16F series. We also have the 18F series that was 40 pins. Does it, does it make sense? So we are going to be seeing more. There are also 8 pin mount controllers, like the 12FC75. You're going to see them. So what I'm going to do is that why we are we um, why we are going to be using this why this is the board we are going to be using i will not restrict you to learning about all that our controllers for instance if i have a project to do i could actually do my project here, my program here i may use this board start an experiment, experiment right now finish it in, in, in another 20 minutes and i'm done but then imagine the program or the system we're supposed to design only requires maybe two input output pin from the controller. Why then should I go and get a 28 pin IC if I need to permanent that system somewhere, install that system somewhere? But since the program has worked there, I can go back and then go and get an 8 pin mouse controller and just use just two input output pin from it. And every other pin that was used there, do you, every other thing that was used on this board, do you understand it? So while I'm making a permanent board, or the, the one I'm going to install, I'm not using this. I'm using a small IC. But that will be because I know that there's an IC that offers less input output and it's be cheaper in the market as to having this number of input output pin that this can offer and only using those two elements. Because for this 28 pin IC, this will offer you 22 input output pin. Why 22 input output pin? We will discuss that in this video. Do you understand? But it's safe to say, that this is the program, this will be the board we are actually going to be using for all our works. But to use this board, you are going to need this programming device alongside. Does it make sense? Is it clear? Is it clear? We are going to be using this two board in this one. So this is our own, uh, it's our product, just to ask, uh, and then is what we're going to be using. Hope you get it. Alright, right. so the summary, you're going to need both your laptop, which is an hardware, software, and other hardware like the programming device and the development board. You're going to need it. Are you with me? Now, when the software or programs are written, circuit diagram is drawn, your code will then flash into the development board through this programming device, and then you can then test. Now, along with the programming device is that you're going to need what? A breadboard. This is a bigger one, anyway, there are smaller ones. The reason for a breadboard is this. Sometimes, there are uh, output operations you want to do that requires that uh, you attach them on a bigger board or an external board to see how it works. So, why this board already offers you inputs 
all the 20 uh, input output, all the 22 input output pin that this mild controller has can offer you. You can put a good point wire, keep those ports to a breadboard. What the point wire goes on? This is what the point wire goes on. This is what the point wire goes on. This is the male to female, this is the male to male. So you are going to be using this the point wire with the breadboard and then this board to there. And then the programming board. Does it make sense? And then you're going to need some set of light emitting diodes and resistors. It's clear? So I'm saying that along with the development board, you're going to need a breadboard. Uh, you're going to need the point wires. I told you you're going to use uh, the male to male. You're going to use the male to female. If you get the female to female, it will also be, be a bad idea. You're going to need some sort of resistance. For now, any value between 330 ohms to 470 ohms will be fine. What do we need for? We need it to attach it to the world, to the light emitting diodes. Does it make sense? So we're gonna need the development board, the breadboard, the front wires, the resistors to attach to this. And that is all you need for now. That is all you need for now. Now, as your classes progresses, there are other components you're going to be needing anyway. But as your classes progresses, or as your class progresses, then you're going to be needing them, then you're going to be unveiling them. But for now, to start this class, today, all that is actually needed is your laptop running this software. You have the development board already, you have the programming board already, and then you have the point wires, the resistors, and everything like that. And then you are good to go. And then you have me. My responsibility here <laughs> is to complicate your life, really, electronically. I will. And not for, for, for bad reasons, it's for the good reasons. It's to the intent that you are what? You are better. I tell you, my students, and I'm telling you too, that coming to my class or listening to me um, will not require you needing any external materials so or any extra materials. Every material that you need is resident in me. I will not only say them, I will teach them, I will show you. And it's, it's, not, about, it's not about creating superhero. I'm, I'm not a super being. I'm a constant of several materials read over time. I mean, when I say over time, it's more than 16 years now in this field. So, there are some materials or information I'm going to actually be making available to you that will take you many years to actually find them on the internet if they still exist at all. Except for the ones we are going to be putting there. <laughs> you get it? Uh, so, you only need any extra material. All you need to do is come to class. Every information you need to know, I will make available to you. And so that you can actually create systems or be proficient in this field. And later come back to even show me things or teach me things I don't know yet. You get it? And man, is that nice, me? There's something that I mean, sometimes I want to sit down and tell him to come to the world and do things. And I'm amazed at some of the things he says. I'm really, really impressed by it. And I will be, I mean, I'm going to. Are you following? So this is, this is all we need to invest in.